You're listening to The Coach Show with Coach Banks, Coach Swanson, Coach Kozlerich, and Coach Doherty on the Coaching Culture and Athletics Radio Broadcast Network. Sit back and enjoy the show. The views and opinions discussed in this podcast are not necessarily the opinion of the host or the coach show on the Coaching Culture in Athletics Radio Broadcast Network. Let's get it done. All right, everybody. Hey, you know, welcome to the, you know, the coach show. It it feels like it's been forever, but I think that's because we've all been contained. Okay. You know, to our, to our own homes and, and this, that and the other. But hey, you know what? You're, you're in for a real treat tonight, folks. Uh, we, we've got coach Radloff, you know, out of West Burlington tonight. Uh, you know, and, and we've got a full house of coaches and slates and all that sort of stuff. We want to make this as interactive as possible. So if you have a question, just put it in the comments. Let us know where you're from, all that good stuff. And, you know what? If you share this show tonight, the first five that share it will get a free copy of my PDF, The Mad Culture Present in Athletics. You know, uh, Radloff, it's it's good to have you, man. Yeah, good to finally be on. Thanks, Chuck. Absolutely. And, and you know, it, it's always good to get two baby faces in here. You know, you and Coach Bryant uh, are the baby faces, and then we got the, the, the three the three muscabeards, or, you know, how, however you want to call it, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, so, uh, Mike, Mike, let everybody know kind of your, uh, your, your coaching background, this, that, and the other, uh, you know, it, you know, th- this past year, uh, Mike had a first, it was the first time he had ever defeated me in a, you know, a JV matchup. It you know, it's, it's a lot of fun though. Oh yeah. Every time we face each other, it's a, it's a battle to the end. Uh, the game up here, like we talked about, went into triple overtime. I didn't think that game was ever going to end. Uh, you know, it's always fun uh, coaching against you, Chuck. Well, you know, it's it, it's like playing chess, man. It's like playing chess. I, I remember uh, a couple years ago, Mike, Mike was at our place, uh, Coach Swanson, and you know, he, he he called a timeout, and and he just he just knew that that I wasn't going to change my defense, and I changed my defense. I started trapping him, and I saw his face. And you know, folks, we we can't use the terminology of the uh, of the words they use with his mouth. But but I mean, <laughs> oh my goodness! But but you know, uh, uh, Mike Mike tonight. Uh, you know, we again we've got a full slate. Let us know where you're from. All that sort of the other. We're going to start tonight's show with name the movie. Okay, so we so we have Coach Bryant, Coach Doherty, uh, Coach Radloff, and Coach Swanson. All right, uh, the first person to shout out the correct. The correct name of the movie, and by the way, it's just pictures. Uh, the first person to do that, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll keep track and we'll keep score here. We ready? Yep. Yeah, let's do it. All right. Here's the first one. Happy Gilmore. Oh gosh, damn. Uh, Radloff. <laughs> okay, so so Radloff's up one to nothing. All right, that's one. Ready? Varsity Blues. Oh. <laughs> Dirty, dirty. Hey, hey, man. All right, so it's one to one. Bryant, man, you got to be quicker than that. I know. I see him, and then like, oh, now I do it. Major league. Uh, oh, dirty. I think Dirty's up two to one. Okay, uh, Swanson's. He, he's he's in the cellar dweller. Okay. Oh, come on, fellas. <laughs> That's, That's the oh, great greatest show of all time. Shoot, shoot. No, I've seen that one. Yeah, no idea. Yeah. Come on, Red Loft. No, no clue. All right, Darty, tell him. Dudes, come on. Do a little bit of let, – let's, let's, they can get it. I know they can. Lunatic French. Okay, I, I, I shouldn't sing, right? Yeah, yeah. Come on. No Don't know. I've never seen a wrestling movie. Honestly. Oh, this greatest movie of all time, hands down, any sporting movie. Hit him, Banks. Hit him. Vision Quest. Oh. That's, 
Holy cow, guys! You, 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 it's like it's like we're in with a bunch of uncivilized guys. My I've goodness, seen the miracle! Madonna uh, was in it. Yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness, the the girl on that show. Okay, here we go. Friday night, Friday night lights. Ah, Dorothy, oh. three to one. Jeez, three I'm to one. Giving you guys the wrestling one. Ah oh, <laughs> man. All right, so so it's the battle for second place now. Come on, Rad, you're letting me down. Hoosiers. Uh. <laughs> Man, our, our, our guest was last place tonight, but that's okay. That's okay. You know, uh, Co- Coach Doherty wins tonight, folks, and what he wins is absolutely nothing. <laughs> Just pride. Nothing but pride. Well, you, you, you know what? You. you know what? I, I when, when we get our CCA hat or beanie, I'll make sure that you have one, Coach. Deal. Uh, <laughs> that, that, wasn't that fun, though? I mean, I mean, something different, right? Went a little better than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, it should have been four to one. I'm just throwing that out there. Okay, okay. Uh, you know, let's let's talk our first con- our first. Or we're we're going to discuss a couple of topics tonight, uh, and a couple of, of important topics, in my opinion. Uh, you know, the the, the first one uh, that, that we'll touch tonight, though, is. Uh, Coach Radloff, you know, there, there's a lot of coaches out there, you know, around the country uh, that, that oftentimes, for whatever reason, even even under, you know, even taking a team to, you know, uh, you know, as far as you can go and having a, a gen- generally good season. And a lot of times, you know, sometimes they get ran out of Dodge. Uh, you you want to talk about some of that stuff or, you know, what what, uh, you know, like what, what do we have to do or, you know, as a sporting culture? Uh, to to get the community and the you know the coaches and the administration all together to buy in, I think it it basically just starts with the parents. Um, I hate to say it, but they just you know it, it all the all these young leagues. You know you have kids in kindergarten playing baseball or playing volleyball all the time, and they just. These parents, you know, they, they the, these kids play, 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 and then all of a sudden they get up to the varsity level, and they might not be that good, but they still think they should be able to play, and it, it's it, it's tough. I mean, like you said, you know, a lot of coaches around here have gotten ran out for having a really good season, and, you know, it's tough. Even if your administration has your back, you have a group of parents, and that's all it takes is two or three parents, and... I mean, you guys are all coaches. You, you, we deal with parents all the time. It's just, mm-hmm. I, th- I, th- I think that's the, the 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 big thing is 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 parents. If we can somehow get them on board, and that's the big thing is getting them on board, and then everything's you know everything's good. I w- I would think. You know, I think uh, you know ultimately at the end of the day, it's you know you you have to be a master communicator. You, you you have to show that positively and positivity and love, but there are times where you know e- even showing that positivity and love and and being being there for them, you know that that sometimes they get the gears you know uh, crossed, and you know we, we we see that all the time, you know uh, you know whether it's you know you're you're even seeing that a little bit in college, guys. What did you think about uh, uh, who who was the who was the Hall of Famer from uh, from the Miami Heat that that, that recently? You know, ripped uh, r- ripped his high school coach. What? Who was that, Coach Swanson? Yeah, that was a uh, Dwayne Wade who was ripping his son's coach, um, and said, "You know what? My son's not playing that much. So I'm not going to go support the team or go watch him." Um, I, I think it is. A, it's a it's a bad culture that we're getting into with that. And I, you know, what Coach Radloff said, I agree. I think kids are playing so long, and parents are investing so much money in their child's development, or not even development, just them playing on teams that when they get to the competitive level, because we're all varsity ch- coaches, I think we can all agree. We do not care what kids do in fifth grade, sixth grade, or even really junior high. It's all about what happens when we get to high school. Mm-hmm. Parents are putting so much time into their kids and their travel teams at those young ages that when they get to high school, well, they've been winning in fifth grade since fifth grade, but high school, why aren't they starting as freshmen or why aren't they playing as sophomores or even, juniors or seniors i think we could all agree that most varsity teams are successful they don't have a lot of freshmen or sophomore playing on them they're mainly upperclassmen who've been with the program who are Mm -hmm. physically fit and different than freshmen but because so much time's you know devoted to these kids some from such a young age it's not so much a uh, 
privilege to play. It's a right to play. You know, you know, Co- Coach Doherty, I, I see it all the time, and and I have to give you props, man. You know, the, the amount of positivity that, that you're giving into, you know, the Fort Madison Nation there. Now, you know, how, how do you get so many kids in the weight room? You know, so so determined to do that. I mean, you know that that is a process, though. You know, what what's the difference between like, uh, you know, give give me an idea of like when it, when it was tough to get people in, and then now because it looks like your your numbers are pretty high. Yeah. Um- I'm really lucky right now. We're, we're 90, I'm getting about 90 some athletes in the, in the room, um, a day. So administration has been super big in, in the development of that, helping me go back five years. And and we had 30, 30, 40, something like that. So the biggest thing is we just wanted to develop an environment that kids wanted to be a part of. And we focus a lot on, on the development. And it's not necessarily about how much weight you can put up. Um, you know, when I was a freshman in high school, I weighed 90 pounds and, and went into bigger, faster, stronger. And, and it, I felt um, like the weight room wasn't for me and because I was a little guy and they kind of pushed me aside. But I, I don't want our guys to feel that way. And we've got an awesome environment. We have kids in there who have been in there since they were eighth graders and now they're junior seniors. And it's awesome to see them take the younger kids right away. I don't I don't even have to do anything. They just kind of gravitate towards them and. Um, you know, it's it's the environment. Kids want to be a part of a positive environment. Uh, uh, Tyler Bryant, uh, you you were a part of uh, you know uh, you know uh, Central East football elite. You know, back back mm-hmm. when I was coaching. You know, we uh, talk talk about the the difference between those couple years when those kids lived in the weight room versus you know some of the other years that uh, you know that, that we didn't. Uh, well, I think we have to realize that back when I was in high school, a couple of people lifted every day and was really into it and then the rest of the team just kind of did it when coach told you to but nowadays it seems like every 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 team is in the weight room whether it's volleyball whether it's track wrestling or football everyone is in the weight room so it's not really an option anymore it's kind of mandatory if you want to win you need to get in the weight room because if you're not then other schools who are um, are just getting that much better than you because we have seen it numerous years at Central Lee. Those teams that aren't living in the weight room are not as strong in any sport compared to those schools that focus on the weight room like Fort Madison does. You know, uh, Coach Radloff. You know, you you, you talk about uh, you know how you've you've been a head coach. You've been a part of you know some great programs. Which, by the way, you guys ran into a buzzsaw in that regional final game, man. That, that, oh, yeah. Comanche was a, they're a different machine. Like uh, Tyler was talking about that team. You could tell lifted. They, yeah. they, they pushed us around and you know, I love our guys to death and they tried, but when you're starting getting pushed yeah. around, pushed around, pushed around, it's, it's no fun. And you know, at the, and the locker room at the end of the game, that's one of the things the guys brought up is they want to lift in the summer. So, we're looking at putting a program together and getting our basketball basketball guys in there and start lifting and getting stronger because, you know, every sport you know is is going to lifting. <laughs> I mean, it's uh, it's it, it's a necessity. You know what I mean? It's survive or, you know, or you know, go go the other route. And anyway, uh, you know, one one of the most important things, and I and I want to devote you know most of our time tonight, guys, to something that's real serious about whether it's uh, whether it's our coaching family, you know, across the United States, or it's you know, it's it's really these student athletes. You know, many many of them have lost their uh, you know lost their seasons, or you know, they're at the very least, uh, you know, they're they're going to be playing on you know less than half of a regular season in the spring. You know, with uh, you know all all these college guys, uh, there, there were studs that could have went out for national championships and gals. Uh, you know, let's let's talk a little bit and devote a little bit of time tonight on you know discussing you know way you know ways that we can help you know each other out as as a family because in in reality, all, all coaches and you know all student athletes and the entire community are a family. You know, who who, who wants to go first? I'll go ahead. Um... I think you bring up you know a great point, and this is such a trying time, uh, you know, especially for the seniors. I'll start talking about them. You know, the seniors are missing out on. I mean, it could be their graduation, it could be their senior prom, 
It could be their senior track season, soccer season, baseball season. I mean, you just don't know what these kids are going to miss out on. And especially those kids who were close to maybe going to the next level, you know, they might have missed their opportunity because of this. And I hope some college coaches reach out and look at these kids um, because they, we have great athletes all across the country that are not being able to show what they can do or, you know, show the improvements that they've made. Um, but what I think is going to be interesting going forward is the next, you know, year, when the next school year starts, football season, basketball season, you know, we don't know how long this is going to go, but the kids who are taking advantage of the time right now to go out to mm-hmm. do work out at home, you know, I posted something for my basketball boys, you can do push-ups every day, you can do a bunch of body weight workouts, and that will still build muscle, that will still get you mm-hmm. lean, that will still do all those things, go run. The teams and the players that go and do those things, I think we're going to see right off the bat in football season are going to have a huge competitive advantage because they're doing those things. You take, you know, three weeks, four weeks, eight weeks off from lifting, you're going to regress a little bit. You're not going to be in the shape that you are at. So my advice to all the kids, no matter if you're a senior right now or, you know, an eighth grader or whatever, stay active, go out and do stuff. I know right now when you're supposed to literally stay home, and play video games all day, your eyes are huge and you're drooling because you're excited about how wonderful this is. But go out and do stuff. Be active. You know, better yourself. Go do something. This is the perfect opportunity. If you're a multi-sport athlete, you take an hour of your day to, you know, basketball, football, baseball, wrestling, you know, do whatever. Weight train. You have all the time in the world. You might as well go and use it right now to Mm -hmm. do it because you're having basically, at least for us right now, three weeks to literally better yourself. And I also think, you know, to, to wrap this up is read, watch sports, watch some old film. But I think reading is a big one. There are some great books for kids to go out and read. And I have to give a shout out to Dylan Stuker. I gave him a book last year. And the best thing is, is he would read it and then his mom would read it. And then she would question him about the chapters they read. You know, this is a kid who's, you know, who was a junior this past season. I give him the sophomore and he went home and he read it. And it's uh, a book by Tim Grover. Um, you know, it's called Relentless. It's about how to be one of the best, you know, how Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant got that competitive edge. You know, I encourage kids, go read that. It doesn't matter what sport you play. It's going to teach you how to get that competitive edge and what those greats did. And so just better yourself physically and mentally at this moment in time while you have the time to do it. Don't just sit and play games on your phone, play Xbox or whatever, because what are you really doing for yourself besides developing this laziness that's not going to benefit you or anyone else in the future i'm just gonna piggyback and then i'll let uh, another coach go <clears throat> you know I, I i it's 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 all great advice i the biggest piece of advice that i could give you know not not only the uh the student athletes but the coaches and the teachers and the parents is uh is is try not to or try to create a routine mm-hmm. uh a, a routine where you're going to get a little better uh and and also turn off the noise you know, uh, you know, Coach Swanson and I had a show about outside noise. Just, you know what, limit limit your social media intake because 90% of that stuff on social media is garbage. I'm just being honest. You know, uh, mm-hmm. you know the, the resources, mm-hmm. uh, stuff that people are sharing, you know, and, and try to be, you know, a part of the solution. Make things better. So a routine. And, you know, get up, shower, shave, do whatever you got to do. You know, put on, some, put on some nicer clothes. Go out and have a run, you know, a run or a walk. Do some exercise. Come back. Do your job. You know, because a lot of us are going to be working from home or, or learning from home. So, so uh, get get into a routine. Don't do it all at once. You know, spend about an hour, then go do something else. But but uh, the most important thing here is make sure you're not eating crap. You know, you're not putting crap in your system, and you're drinking mm-hmm. a lot of water, and you're exercising, and try to try to establish that routine, and de- mm-hmm. and and definitely check up on your buddies. You know, it doesn't mean go over to their house or you know or whatever, be, be, because we need to follow the guidelines so we can defeat this as soon as possible. But you know what? Re- reach out, reach out, you know, and talk and stuff like that. And and I think this this is uh, you know a this is a super healing for us as coaches. Because you know, each and every week we get a, we get a, to discuss some topics together, you know, and and just talk shop, and I and I, and I think that's always important. So that's that's kind of my uh, two cents and piggyback off Coach Swanson. Yeah, I agree. Um, you know, it's, it's tough. It's tough for us. Um, I'm getting messages all the time, and it, 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 it's great because kids are saying that they they miss me, you know, and they miss us, and they miss being in our environment, like we talked about earlier, and that's. That's fantastic. My heart bleeds for the the seniors. You know, mm-hmm. they 
it, it's a little bit different when your time's winding down and you know it. You have that target date, graduation, but this was ripped out from under them. And there's a lot up in the air right now. And there's a lot of things that they're, they don't know that we don't know. I mean, and so it, it's really tough to, to talk to those kids and have those conversations through, through texting and stuff. But I sent a message out to our guys and I said, this is going to be a, a time where we find out whether you have wishes or you have goals. Because the dudes that have goals, they're going to make sure that they get their workouts in. We, we're lucky enough to have an app that we run our, our athletic enhancement program off of. So right away, I started making programs for at home and, and things like that. I'm also a huge science nerd. So I'm sending them information on, on power, you know, and, and there's a lot of great statistics out there on what you need to be training right now when you can't get into a weight room. But um, I agree. I agree with being a student of the game. Um, there's so much that you can learn. I mean, YouTube's a great thing. You can mm -hmm. spend an hour watching positive things that are going to make you better. Or you can spend an hour watching cat videos, dancing. I, I mean, your choice is yours. Again, do you have goals or do you have wishes? You know, I, I have to throw out or the memes that coach Banks sends his fellow coaches. <clears throat> coach, I really, I really like that quote that, uh, do you have wishes or do you have goals? Mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot of kids, especially, you know, baseball kids, are they sitting around doing nothing? Are they getting out, throwing a baseball, hitting off a tee, you know, doing the little things that's going to get them ready for the season? Because, you know, another three or four weeks, all of a sudden, boom, you're in your season. Yeah. Coach Bryant? Um, I, I like the goals idea. Um, for those kids that – always want to go to the next level. They, they say it, but for me, writing things down really helps out. So like right now I have goals that I'm trying to accomplish. So I have them written down and each night I look at those goals. And if I didn't do something to try to achieve that goal, then I'm like, okay, that day was wasted tomorrow. I got to make sure I do something to achieve that goal. So athletic wise, if these kids are wanting to play at the next level, or if it's for these baseball kids, if they're wanting to have a successful season, they need to write these goals down and work on them throughout this um, extended break, however long it may be. And then you can actually see yourself progressing towards those goals. And they don't have to be lofty goals like N NBA, anything like that. It could be simple like perfecting this pitch or um, perfecting the jump shot um, outside, something like that, just something to get these kids – moving because wishes you you can kind of sit around and eat potato chips with but goals you have to bust your butt in order to achieve them so that's why i like about coach doherty saying that's that's very good now you know uh also you know a, a lot of times you know whether whether it's a coach uh whether whether it's a, a whether it's a parent whether it's a you know it's one of our student athletes Sometimes for whatever reason, or a community member, sometimes for whatever reason, sometimes they're a little bit shy as far as reaching out and asking a question or, you know, input. Uh, j j just know every one of us teachers, us coaches, we are hungry. We, we are, we are we, I mean, we, we are ready for questions so we can discuss and help enhance and try to get this through the situation as much as possible. And I think that's important because some, I, you know, I, I remember my early days, you know, I thought it was really hot stuff, you know, as this football coach, I was like, what? I don't need to listen to them. I don't need to listen to this crap. You know, I already have all the answers. You know what? I was dead wrong. I, and I found that out about week four of practice when, uh, when head coach Jim Knott says, Chuck, come on, man. Just ask a question. And, you know, but, but deep down, you know, there was a little bit of arrogance, but there was a little bit of this thing where, you know, hey, I was the little guy in the room. I was coaching freshman football at that point. And, you know, I, I, I didn't know whether or not they would take me seriously if I asked those questions. So never be afraid to ask questions to get better. I, I think that's important. Mm -hmm. Man, it got really quiet. <laughs> I didn't know. We didn't know if you had another question or something, yeah. you know. You're always the one to prompt us. I know, I know. It's like, uh, it's like I, you know, I we're we're gonna have to get better with our signs, right? You know, yeah, we're gonna have to have something so that we don't have those awkward si dead silences. Oh man, but you know, as long as there's not other podcasts out there trying to steal them. Oh yeah, oh 
Yeah, you know, I, and and you know, j- j- you just brought that up, Coach Bryant, and I'm going to steal because that's what coaches do. They steal pretty much everything, you know, that all this good. I know, yeah. It's like, oh, great, this is teacher pay teachers. We're going to do this. But yeah. uh, Kurt Hines uh, had had a great uh, comment today, and and he said that wouldn't it be nice for us to uh, take the time. Uh, you know, to self uh, self evaluate everything that's around. I mean, and, and he was showing a picture of this, uh, you know, this empty field. And you know, in this empty field, he was discussing, wouldn't it be nice for us to come back? And the hunger and the excitement that people are going to have for the sports that comes back, isn't it? You know, it, wouldn't it be nice that we would stop yelling at officials, that we would stop yelling at uh, you know uh, coaches, and 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 that we we could you know tell our uh, our sons or daughters, hey. I'm really proud of you. Yeah, yeah. Right. Oh, that's, that's an awesome message. Sorry, Coach. Um, I saw that same thing on, on his social media, and um, he's 100% right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, was I, gonna I, say I agree, too. I think that would be a good thing for everybody to, you know, just come clean, start new. Yeah, I, I think the one thing that we can get out of this whole ordeal is the fact that you know, sports are a luxury. Sports are a privilege to us mm-hmm. all. Um, you know, we're all going crazy because there's none on TV right now. You know, and we're lucky. Think of all the nurses, doctors, farmers, truck drivers that yeah. are still having to bust their butt to make sure that this is contained and that we can go about our daily lives and make sure we have toilet paper at Walmart and all those crazy things. You know, so I hope a lot of people start seeing that sports are just a luxury to us all, you know. Yes, as, as high school coaches, we want to win and all that stuff, but it's at the end of the day, it is just a game. It's not something that's going to you know, change all of our lives for the better in a situation like this. You know, we're learning that we can live without actors and you know, athletes and all that stuff. So I hope people do come away from this, especially you know, in gar- regards to youth sports, that there's no need getting work- worked up at a fifth, you know, fifth grade baseball game or anything like that. Just let the kids enjoy and play it because you're missing it right now. We all are. And so let's make sure, and I really hope that we come back from this and understand that sports, especially at the youth level, are, are just fun. They're meant to be fun and mm-hmm. not taken so seriously. I wanted to make sure that I gave plenty of quiet time, so I'm practicing my teaching. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> You know, you're you're absolutely right. I, you know, too too many times we we, we become in, embrazened, uh, you know, in the in the day to day grind. And you know, I I, I kind of I, I can give it in, into a football perspective because I've coached that for so many years. You know, this past year was was really tough on this old guy, but I did watch my daughter, you know, uh, cheerlead, which which was pretty awesome. And and I needed a year to to basically you know uh, recharge this that and the other. But from a football perspective and the grind, you know. First, uh, you know, you, you start in, in May, uh, you know, where, where you, you know, three days a week at least where, where you're walking through plays, you're talking strategies with your coaches, uh, you're, you're excited about it. But, but at the end of May, you're, you're also tired uh, be, because, you know, you've spent the entire school year and, and all the rigmarole that goes with it. And, and, you know, teachers go through that, you know, back and forth slump, you know, so to say. But then, but then you start to recharge in June. You know, you're, you're, you're lifting weights. Uh, you know, you're, you're, you're sharing athletes in the weight room. You're doing this and that. You're running your plays. Then you hit July, the, the hot days of July. You go to camp. You know, you're, you're busting into each other. You're, you're figuring out who you are. Coaches are spending, you know, a few more hours, you know, uh, you know uh, a week. Then you hit August. And then, and then you hit the grind. You know, the, the grind in August before the, the, the very first game when you're smelling the hot dogs in the stands, you know, and, and, and you're, you're, you're getting ready for that. And then, you know, the, the kids are tired of hitting each other. They're, they're, they're starting to question. Uh, you know, coaches are even starting to question, like, well, is this, is, is this a relevant, you know, tool to utilize? Then you hit September and you're like, ah, right? And, and things are good. And then it's like fast forward to the end. You know, I, I, I think, uh, you know, we, we have to look at uh, th- this perspective in that in that zone. We're in a grind right now. But uh, but we but at the at the end of the uh, the light at the end of the tunnel is a beautiful thing and it'll go by fast. I agree. And I just want to say one thing off of that. As I know, as a teacher, sometimes you're thinking and man, I want this day to be over or, you know, I can't wait for this week to be over. You know, after this, I don't know if I'll ever catch myself saying that again because I truly miss my kids. I truly miss being there. I truly miss just teaching and 
dealing with all the, you know, the nonsense, the good, the bad, all that. I truly miss it because it's not just a job. It's who I am. And so I don't know if there'll be another time, you know, where I'll say, man, I want this week to be over because I truly miss it. Even this week was supposed to be our spring break. I wasn't supposed to go to work no matter what. And I've been sitting at home the past week thinking, I want to go back. And so now another three weeks off, it's it's going to be killer. It really is. I don't know how I'm going to make it through it. You know, uh, and, and I'll let anybody chime in here in a minute. <clears throat> I do want to talk about this. You know, usually at this point in the spring break, you're like, man, where did the spring break go? Doggone. But, you know, the, the, the range of emotions, you know, Thursday, you're thinking, whoo, this is the last day. We're going to have PD tomorrow. We're going to be off a week. You know, we're, we're going to recharge our batteries. And then, boom, it was like hitting a brick wall. Boom, mm-hmm. you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, it it allows me, you know, the perspective is, uh, you know, you know, look, look, looking back, I, I don't I don't think I'll ever as a teacher or a coach, uh, you know, make those statements, you know, again and, and mean them, Coach Swanson, you know, whereas, you know, gosh, I need a break. Today was a bad day, this, that and the other. Uh, I, I agree. I, I miss I miss being, you know. Uh, sharing that stuff, and we're just getting ready to start our three-week, uh, you know, off time. And uh, you know, folks out there, you know, in the community, it's not a break, and and we don't see it like that. We we we're in the front lines of education, uh, not in the front lines of you know all these uh, hardworking nurses and doctors and everybody in the front lines, law enforcement, whatever. Props, prayers to you guys because without you, uh, we we wouldn't get to do you know even this. Yeah, I, I mean, breaks are needed for sure, um, it, but you don't know what, what you got till it's gone type of thing. And just like the seniors, when it's all of a sudden ripped out from under us and you're not sure, there's a lot of things that you're, you're, you don't know, um, a lot of uncertainties, it's scary, you know. And part of that message that I sent out to our guys, uh, you know, we don't get to control this situation but we do control our, our reaction to the situation. So making a positive out of a negative. Um, and it, it's scary. I mean, it, it's, I miss my kids. I miss my dudes. Mm-hmm. I miss working with them. Um, I'm like that after a weekend, but th- this is scary for me because you don't know how long it's going to be. Yeah, I agree. You know, being a teacher and a coach, in the past, I'd always be like, oh, I just want one day of nothing. Now all of a sudden I got three weeks and it's like, I don't want this. I don't want to ever want to say that again, that I need a day off because like you guys, you know, I'm ready to go back to school now. I mean, I wish, I wish we could go back tomorrow because, you know, I just miss being in that routine, seeing the kids, you know, them excited to see you. Even even the ones that razz you on a daily basis, they're still excited to be in you know be in the process. You know, it's uh, it, man, it's pretty crazy. But folks, we're not going to be all doom and gloom tonight, okay? You know, we're 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 trying to live on the lunatic fringe, okay? Uh, and and you guys need to watch Vision Quest. <laughs> I guess apparently. I'm, 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 yeah, no kidding. I'm, I'm I'm here to tell you that you know I grew up in the '80s, so I saw this at the drive-in. And when it, when I saw the girlfriend, buddy, I was like, oh, I was starstruck. You know, I was like, wow. Yeah, you know, I was, I was just a little kid at that point, right? Oh, good Lord. You know, it's on, hopefully it's on Netflix. Well, Co- Coach Doherty, t- tell them about Vision Quest. And, like, I'm, I'm sure your coach said, hey, this is a great movie, right? Wrestling coach? That was uh, one of our first bonding times when I was in high school as we watched it, but we were all in for the, the wrestling. We didn't care about the love story part. So there's a lot of uh, fast forwarding on the old VHS that happened. Um, but yeah, it was, it's, it's a good movie. Did you, did you go out and rent it though that weekend? Uh, Coach Smith had it and he, he invited okay. us over. And, and like I said, there was uh, fast forward we watched the training. We watched the wrestling. We watched uh, you know, the log carrying up the stadium and, and we were pumped about that. We didn't, we didn't know that there was a love story behind it and, Probably a good thing. Yeah, yeah, but it's funny. Uh, a- Andrew Cartwright. Okay, I got to put it up here. All right, he says Vision Quest. We need a remake. I, I agree. I agree. And then uh, there, there's Mom. I think. Yeah. Hi, Mom. Yeah. 
It's awesome. I I think she's like I, I'm going to have to just give her a free copy of the the Mad Culture President in Athletics for free because she's she's always here. She's always uh, you know commenting. I, get, I can't wait to meet her. Actually, I, you know, she's awesome. That's, that's mm-hmm. awesome, man. Now, what do you what do, what do you tell uh, you know these be, because most of us coaches, believe it or not, are the uh, are the the more hyperactive individuals. Ag- agree or disagree? Agree. Agree. Okay. So what 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 if uh, what what do we tell our you know our our friends you know other other than what we've already told them you know establishing the routine, seeing the good things, but uh, you know what do you tell your fellow coaches to try to calm down? And, uh, and, and, you know, to think more rationally to move forward here. Maybe watch film, old film. That's what I'm going to go do. I'm going to, mm-hmm. I'm going to dig into huddle and find out things that, you know, that we could do better as a team, what I could do better as a coach, you know, just self-evaluation time. Yeah. I'm going to go with coach Swanson, everything that we tell our athletes we can be doing the same thing. I mean, as a, mm-hmm. as a coach, we invest a lot of our energy and things into these kids and take away from ourselves and our family. And this might be a good time to kind of get your, your personal fitness back on, spending time with your family, and then going and, and you can always learn and always get better. Oh, yeah, I agree. I mean, I've started getting back in a routine knowing we weren't going back to school early on, you know wake up, do this, do this. You know, I have a, a bunch of books I plan on reading over the next couple of weeks just because, you know, some of the coaching books are just truly wonderful ones to steal ideas from and whatnot. So I, if anyone has I, any ideas for, like, good books to read, I suggest throw them out there. I have a good list of ones I really love that, you know, I think they can make me a better coach and a better person. I think that's this is a good time to, you know, improve in both those areas. Have you read my book yet? I'm, I'm messing with you. I have not read your book yet, no. <laughs> wait, wait, which one? The the Mad Culture present in athletics. You, oh yeah, you sent me the beginning copies of it. Remember? No, I, oh that's right, that's yeah. right. You know, and you know, I'll, I'll put that up there, right? The Mad Culture present in athletics. Get your copy today. Kind of tooting my own horn. Sorry, I, I I'll pro- <laughs> if if I start losing, uh, you know, broadcasters, they're they're going to be pretty mad at me. Uh, anyway, anyway, uh, Coach Bryant. Um, I, th- I think a positive out of all this madness is us doing exactly what the other coaches have been saying, self-evaluating, but also um, kind of slowing yourselves down, enjoying the process. I mean, um, from a young guy, um, I, I don't have a lot of previous years to look at coaching-wise, but um, I've been making a list. Um, it's split in half. One side is things that I do good at. And as coaching and teaching, and then things that I need to work on. Um, and so, as a as a player, these kids could be doing the same thing. Make that list because you gotta know what you're good at so you can improve on it. But also know what you struggle at in order to um, try to get it moved over to the other side of the list. Because, and like Coach Doherty said, you can always get better, whether it's the mental side of the game or whether it's the physical side of the game. So. If they are at home watching YouTube, not no dancing cats, um, li- looking at a film like um, find a find a great fundamentally sound player in whatever sport it is. Don't look at the fancy ones. Look at the fundamentally sound ones, because in my first full year as a varsity um, sport t- uh, coach, I have realized that the fundamentals may seem like a small thing. But they are incredibly huge, and as a player, I knew that, and so I, I really preach on it that working on the fundamentals, especially at a young age, or even in the high school level, you can always work on those in order to get better. Couldn't agree more. Uh, <clears throat> you know, uh, Coach Radloff. I mean, what? You know, if if you were to look at uh, you know this current situation, because. You know, honestly, there, there's a, there's more unknowns than there are knowns. Um, what advice can you give to a person that's really stressing out about this? You know, whether it's a student athlete, a fellow coach, a friend, uh, you know, a parent. What what advice could you give them to just kind of hey, calm down and move forward? Just um, if you're isolated, try hanging out with friends, call somebody, um, just talk about the situation. Just don't sit at home and you know, by yourself and 
worry about this. You know, go out and see some friends. Um, you know, try try. You know, explaining yourself what what's going on. Mm -hmm. Okay, you you got a message there from uh, Kim Becker. Uh, she says, "Sorry, Rad, Vision Quest is not on Netflix, but you can rent it on Redbox." <laughs> I guess I'm gonna go to Redbox then. <laughs> <laughs> just just make sure that you bring a wipey, though, right? Oh yes, yes. Okay, yeah, man. Um, so, any anything else for the for the good of the group tonight, guys? I mean, you know, the the best advice that you can give anybody out there, you know, especially us that are. Uh, you know, kind of saddened because we, you know, it, it really is kind of unknown. I'll, I'll just say this, um, you know, being a history teacher and all that wonderful stuff, you know, throughout history, you've seen all the wonderful things that mankind has done. And there's no way this tiny virus is going to wipe us out. We just have to stay calm. Mm -hmm. We just have to understand that these are things that happen and apparently they happen every hundred years. You know, which seems to be a, a thing, it seems like. But, uh, you know, we we have done some amazing things and we will continue to do amazing things and we will always do amazing things. So mm -hmm. to get worked up and freaked out about a virus, understandable, but we will definitely overcome. We've overcome worse. We will overcome worse in the future. We can definitely handle this. I I think that's perfect, don't you guys think? I mean, yeah, yeah absolutely. Man, you know, for, and, th and that's even the history teacher. <laughs> okay. Uh, hey, Wednesday night, folks. Uh, we we're, we're going to be discussing the four two five uh, defense. We're going to have Man, Manny Tarango, and and I hope I pronunciated his name correctly. If not, he can uh, put his hand through the uh, monitor and smack me in the face uh, on Wednesday night. But I, I'm excited to have him. It's going to be like a clinic, folks. It's going to be pretty exciting. Mike Radloff, I, I I really appreciate you coming on. You're going to be have, you're going to have to start coming on more often, brother. I think so, too. This is a good time. I enjoyed it. Absolutely. So, uh, last words for the good of the group. Who wants to go first? Um, I can go first. Um, our, our coach at Central College for football, his name is Jeff McMartin. He has a famous saying of hang loose because you don't want to sphincter up, as Coach Banks likes to say. So, through this whole process, you could either keep thinking about all the negatives or you could – go like me i'm a very easygoing guy so whatever happens happens you just gotta react to it like coach doherty said and whether you act uh, react to it negatively or positively is going to affect you as a person so if you keep looking at things positive like coach swanson said this thing is going to flow over um soon hopefully and everything's going to go back to normal and we're going to start enjoying things a little more and hopefully see these kids come out and do some great things after this break absolutely who wants to go next? Agreed. Uh, I'm going to kind of piggyback off that. We have a mathematical formula, I guess. E plus R equals O. It's what we yep. set up for yep. our guys. Yep. So we talked about it. We don't control the events, but we do control our response to these events. And, you know, if you have a positive response to an, uh, uh, an event, then you are going to have better outcomes from it. So hang tough. It's a tough time, but we'll get through it. Coach Watson, you want to go off of that? I <laughs> oh, that, that that's tough to go off of. I'll just say this: um, I've seen this quote around a few times that when you're looking for the bad, all you find is bad. Well, throughout this whole thing, I've all, I've seen a lot of good from people who have opened their hearts, have done a wonderful things for the community and for other people. And so, as bad as things are right now or may seem, always look for the good, and I think you'll find a lot during this situation. Yeah, I agree. Just stay with the good. Absolutely. Now, I, I, I'm going to take the time to, hey, uh, folks out there, hug, hug your kids, love your wife, pet your dog, uh, check on your strong friends because uh, they're probably the ones that, uh, that, that need to hear from you. God bless, and we'll see you Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Central with Coach Manny Tarango. Good night.